Uh, good afternoon to you all. It's my pleasure being among uh, a group, a special group. And um, I'm very happy, although I feel so unworthy, standing before you to address you on any issue. And as a matter of fact, I'm somebody that I don't really like motivational speaking or coming out and talk, 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 talk. I believe in action. But somehow, we have to share ideas among ourselves if we intend to look into the future. As people who are intending to look into the future, as people who are intending to look, think the future, we have to share the ideas, because these ideas are worth spreading. And it's on that note that I, 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 I pray your judges to welcome me. And I, Fabo is Samson and I'm going to talk on shifting paradigms. The turn, the turn pipe to El Dorado is a question. Shifting paradigms. The Toro Pike to El Dorado. Uh, in the last speech of the speaker there, Mr. Shabal also, he mentioned something about paradise. And we want to think, we want to contract, uh, we want to put that against the future. And it's my pleasure seated among the young minds who are conduits of great ideas from the present to the future. Because this generation of intellectual cohorts sitting here are conduits of ideas that we have now to the future. Some people lived some years back in the 50s or were born in the 50s, but now they are the conduits of ideas of the 50s that they've taught in the 50s and now are manifesting in the 20, in the, in the 21st century. And so we who are on the threshold, one who are living our lives on the threshold of the 21st century, are conduits of ideas that we are talking about that are going to happen in 2020, 2015. So we are conduits of those ideas. And there's a popular palace that's quoted from a source that is anonymous to me, and it says that there's only one constant in life, and that is change. But ironically, I do not believe in change. And you ask me why I don't believe in change. But before I go into that, I will take my own nuances from this. In thinking the future, first and foremost, we have to take an observation of our past. Because our past is a green light to the future. Well, you have to pardon my historical intrigues because I think I'm in history. And the question of paradigm, paradigm shift, as we propose a perfect tomorrow, the future. And the question is, is that, do we really need a change of our present to affect the future? Is change important? That's what I'm talking about. Because everybody wants to think about, when I'm talking about the future, some people want to say, okay, there has to be a total change. So I'm asking the question, do we need a total change for us to approach the future? That, that's it. And so that's the origin of my topic that says, shifting paradigms, that is change. Is it a turn pipe to El Dorado? That's a perfect future we all desire because we look at the future as a perfect state. Okay, in the future, now I have, I'm going to have the billion naira, or I'm going to be in America, or I'm going to be the president of Nigeria. We look at that future as a perfect. But do we actually need change in all, in all circumstances? Before I move on, whether I would like it or not, I said I didn't believe in change. But whether I would like it or not, change is what happens every day. Like the former British Prime Minister Harold Macmillan says, the wind of change is blowing through this continent, and that continent is Africa. And whether I would like it or not, this growth of national consciousness is a political fact and we must all accept it as a fact. And that was made in 1960 at the point when the British Empire was dwindling. A lot of countries that were under the dominion of the British were getting independent. And so the British have to accept it that the people, the colonized people accept coming out and achieving national consciousness is a political fact. So whether we like it or not, change is what happens every day. But is it a necessity to the future? Is it a necessity to the, to the, to the future? Yes, we are all uh, students, and we are all people who have had a daily dally with uh, information and communication technology. And I want us to go through this short timeline. Next slide. Well, some, some years back, in the last era, that's the, in the era before Christ, we had this man, Alexander the Greeks. He was from the West, he was from Greece, or Macedonia, as it were. And he made a feat. Formerly, the world was controlled from the east. We had the Babylonians, the Persians ruling the world. And Alexander the Great came from the west and defeated the east. And ever since then, our empires 
people ruling us, or ideas have coming from the West and not from the East. But now, ideas are coming from the East. So, I mean, now, is, those, is that change necessary for the future? I have to that question. And in the 16th century or 17th century, we had this uh, locomotive train, and that revolutionized the world. So everything we have, that was the part of industrialization, and that happened in England. So that's one shifting paradigm. Yes, and after that, you can see slaves here. The industrial revolution brought about a change. But what did that change did do for those people? They went out and started realizing peoples. Taking people as slaves, and those are, those are slaves from East Africa and those of Uvasa, and I want to tell you that it happened in West Africa also. So that was what the shifting paradigm did of industrialization did to the West. They came to get people as slaves, even at the point again, they began to colonize us and get our resources and go to their country and manufacture them there. So they were impoverishing us at detriment at, at their own at the expense of their riches. So next slide, please. Now, in the 20th century, you can see this man with a toothbrush mustache. That's Adolf Hitler. He brought another new idea called National Socialism. That was another change because Germany was undergoing economic turmoil. And he said, see, I have, he came, he came up with his own idea called the Nazi. And in the end, there was wars, and World War II was the greatest war that was ever fought. And more people died in that war than the whole number of people that died in, from the beginning of time to that time, until now. And in the end, to end the war, we had the invention of the nuclear bomb. And now we're in the nuclear age. And that leveled two cities. And now the world is saying never again. Never again to nuclear technology. Advanced to nuclear technology in making bombs. Yes, that was a change, a paradigm shift in warfare technology. But now, that change again is at our detriment. Next slide. And now, after the Second World War, we began to have liberty. Some of our forefathers went to fight in Burma. And when they came back, they saw that, okay, the Indians are already winning, they are already getting independence in 1948. We took again independence. Along with independence came the issue of democracy. And everybody was talking about democracy, democracy, democracy. But is democracy the proper form of government for everybody? Can every country experience democracy the way it's working somewhere else? Let's ask ourselves that question. So the paradigm shift from maybe monarchy or from any form of government to democracy is questionable. Is it necessary for the future? Next slide. Now, one of the countries we want to pick in this democracy experience is Burma. The woman you see there is Aosan Suu Kyi. And her father was a Burmese general who fought for the British, who fought for the British in the Second World War. And after that, he fought for their independence. But unfortunately, when she became, when she stepped into the political stage, the military took over, she was put in prison from 1991 when she won her election, and she was only released in 2010. She lived all her life fighting for democracy. But thank God now, the Burmese are experiencing some form of democracy. But as it brought the paradigm shift, and that paradigm shift brought a, a, positive, brought a positive change. And we as Nigerians want to ask that question, when we're talking about democracy, how best can we infect it? What I'm saying here is that I'm not saying change is not important for the future. What I'm saying is that those changes that we see that are coming every time in our day-to-day -day experiences, how best can it suit our own conditions? Next slide. Next slide. Yes. Let's go back to Europe again. We talked about Europe dominating the world in terms of after the uh, advent of Alexander the Great. And in 2002, this currency was launched, Euro, and that's of uh, the, Euro, the European Central Bank in Frankfurt, Germany. Yes, it brought about goodwill, free trade, no more borders, people can move from one place to another, and people are saying, yes, 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 it's a good idea. And some people are saying, okay, in Africa or West Africa, we should introduce the echo. But unfortunately now, you can see these are Greek policemen who are trying to quell a, a protest. And right now, there's a talk that Greece wants to back out from the Eurozone. And what is the future of this great currency, the Euro? What is the future of the free market economy or free border movement? What is the future? 
can that paradigm be applied in, in, in our own West Africa, so region or in Africa? Would that paradigm shift work well? Let's ask ourselves that question. Next. And so, let's come back home again. The man you see here is Charles Taylor, currently standing trial at the International Chemical Court in The Hague. Well, in the 1990s, it was something like this. He was very handsome, but with a connection call. And you can see fighters, child soldiers, people fleeing. Yes, he has caused a lot of trauma. Um, apologies to, I know that there's a chief justice here or something like that. But now, he's been taken to The Hague. And there's a question. Is this, what, will this, what will this trial? What will it do? What will, what will it benefit the Liberian, the common Sedalonian or the Liberian? There, there, there are thousands or millions of dollars paid on legal itinerary. And what has it done to better the lot of the Sedalonians? So that's another question. So, well, in Nigeria we have a lot of corrupt leaders, or we have a lot of things that's happening now. And somebody are some people are saying, or oh, even in Kenya, some people, some leaders have been tried, have been recommended to be taken to the gate. But trying these our leaders, I'm not saying I'm not saying we should control corruption, and I'm not saying there should not be a justice system. But should we readily embrace that paradigm shift that okay, everybody should be punished in the Hague? Can there be a better justice system? It's another question. It's another teaser. Yes, the next slide. Yes, another paradigm shift. South Sudan. In Nigeria now, somebody was saying in 2015 we should that in Nigeria is not expected to be one country. But there's one country that has experienced in turmoil like Nigeria, and that's South Sudan, born July 9 in 2011. Yes, Sudan did independence in 1966. And since then, the South Sudanese, who are majority Christians or animists, have been oppressed. And after long years of civil war, if you don't know this, they gained independence. And this was the picture of Sudanese in last year, raising their flags, celebrating independence, happy. But now, they are mobilizing troops to fight. So has separation brought, has that paradigm shift brought peace? Okay, if Nigeria is to divide into the north, south, east, west, or maybe the Uruguay Republic, the Afra or Arewa Republic, would that paradigm shift bring peace? Will it bring progress for our future? Let's think about it. We are future leaders. Next slide. Yes, this is another question, the Iraq question. In 2003, the United States and the Allies invaded Iraq. And what they were saying that they wanted another paradigm shift, they wanted a change in Iraq, the governance of Iraq. And you can see George Bush there on USS um, United States Chief um, Conqueror. So they declared the war in Iraq ended after just three months. But after that, we had the statue of Saddam Hussein falling down, and the United States armies leaving Iraq. But after that, what do we see? Bomb blasts, people homeless. So, if some people are saying, okay, in Africa we need foreign aid or something like that, is that, is that, is, is that paradigm shift necessary to take us to a suitable future, if you are thinking about the future? Is foreign intervention the answer? Or in what way should it happen? In what way should we receive aid? It's another question, in paradigm shift, think of the future. Next slide. And what can we see? In Africa, in the north of Africa, last year, early this year, we had a serious drought. And some people were causing that, oh, why should I be in Africa? It's only in Africa that these things can happen. But I will tell you that somebody was mentioning the Civet Nations, and I think there are, there are nations they call the Brexit Nations. Those nations are already advancing. Some years, just last year or two years ago, there was a power outage in Rio de Janeiro, Rio de Janeiro and on that one day it was fixed. But we know what's happening here now. In one week, our party has not been fixed. So, should we cause ourselves that we are Nigerians? Should I start thinking of, okay, because I'm born in Somalia, and I got to the same year, so that's why all these things are happening. And if I, if, but we also understand that countries like China, that's, that's the longest rail line in China. Now, the longest rail line in the world, the fastest road. And this, a cable bridge again, in a, in a lovely country. So, Let's think of the future. Is it that our cost being Nigerians? Do we, do we necessarily need to travel out to achieve, to attain a bright future? Next slide. And we see the Arab Spring, and everybody was celebrating, yes, when we had our own fuel crisis, and people were saying, let's go and protest. Let's go and protest. 
But when the Arab Spring ring, why it allowed, why Mubarak stepped down happily, why, why he stepped down peacefully, it brought about war, civil conflict in Libya. And we can see the Libyan uh, leader, former Libyan leader, Muhammad Gaddafi, in blood. But really, it has not really, if you want to count the country in the Arab world, it's only Tunisia that has experienced peace. So will revolution bring about that paradigm shift? Will that really bring about a better future? Let's think it. Next slide. And now, this is the end of tyrannical leaders. Some leaders, Idi Amin of Uganda went to Saudi Arabia. A lot of them were deposed. The and now we have what we call the ISIS waiting for, they say waiting for every corrupt leader or something like that. But what, what benefit is it? Try our leaders in the ICC. Would that paradigm shift make us create a better future for us? Let's think it. Next slide. And now, let's come to the Nigerian story. Let not let us forget, we have a bitter past. That's children during the Afghan Civil War. And now, in 2011, Nigeria conducted what they call the best election ever. But after that election, you can start being allowed. And what's the truth? Subsidy, prices, and Boko Haram bombings. So now, the paradigm shift of democracy, how, how beneficial is it to we as Nigerians in thinking the future? In thinking the future. Next slide. Now, we've gone through these timelines, we've viewed a lot of paths, we've seen the future of some countries, but what I'll say is that paradigm shift, is it a turn pipe to the Eldorado we pray for? Maybe not, or maybe or always, but sometimes it does. So, as students, we have this common mantra amongst us, we call it Aluta continua, Victoria Sata. And once everybody gets that, we say, okay, we say, yes, Aluta, Aluta, radical change, radical change. But let us think it. Just recently in Adi College of Education, there was an Aluta. But I've seen that Alutas bring about burning of vehicles, carnage, destruction, and everything. So, if you think in the future, as students, I won't propose my idea on you. But change, sometimes is beneficial for the future. But sometimes, because some change did something for some people, doesn't mean it can necessarily apply to our situation. Thank you very much for listening.